See, therefore, brethren, how you walk circumspectly, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My faithful, we just read this epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians, in which he gives us this advice to redeem the time. Redimentes tempus, in Latin. Redeem the time. What does that mean, this expression? You know, it has always very interested me from the seminary. Redeeming, redeeming time, to redeem the time. And if we look at the commentary of St. Thomas, some commentaries on the Bible, we can find there are two attitudes implied with this expression, with this advice from St. Paul. And the first one, we need to make up for the lost time, the time we lost in the past. And St. Thomas says in this sense, for it sometimes happens that a person lives a great part of his life in sin. And this is lost time. But how is he ready to redeem it when man is incapable of paying his debts? I reply that he ought to devote himself to good works to an even greater degree than he be but previously pursued sinful ones. So, make up for the lost time we spend in sins. That's the first meaning of the expression. And the second meaning is linked to this one. We have, we must to not squander time, using it wisely and prudently. So first, make up for the lost time, and how can we do that? Using it wisely and prudently, not squandering it. And this way, the comment of the Bible on Pirot says, In God's intention, each moment of our life is given to us to practice duty, to advance in virtue and to merit heaven. Each moment well used is worth eternity. In this way, time is not lost. It is gained. When we spend our time doing good works, says Saint Jerome, we redeem it. So, my faithful, I guess we understand what this expression means. Let's not waste time. Because wasted time is lost forever. And our Lord warned us about that in a special parable, very clear. The parable we find in St. Luke chapter 12. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. A common problem, not a recent one. Since all times, inheritances have been source of problems in families. But he said to him, Jesus, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? So he shows him that it doesn't, doesn't matter. These things, they don't matter. And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night, 
your life is being demanded of you and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich towards God. So this is a perfect example our Lord gives us of someone wasting time. Wasting time. And if we, you know, we look at the parable, we can see several problems in the psychology, in the thinking of this man, why he reacted this way. The first one, this man believed, wrongly in that case, he will have a long life. He will have a long life. Yeah, I have time. I have time. And we're talking about a man who already worked quite a lot. I already, you know, did some good benefits in his life, in his business. He's so quite advanced in age. Illusion. Making plans for the future when he doesn't have today to finish his life. And this is why St. James says, Now you will say, today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city. We will spend the year there. We will negotiate and we will win, have some gain. You, would not know, you would do not know what will become of your life tomorrow. You are steam that appears for a moment and then disappears. Instead of saying, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. So the first great illusion of this man. He thinks he will live forever. And yes, he will, but not in this life. In the next one, this life will finish, will end, but he doesn't think of it. He thinks he has all the time in the world to continue, to have fun, to relax, to eat, to drink, to be merry. First illusion. You know how many examples we know and we personally know. You know, life, people, they thought that they would live a long life and Jesus just cut the thread of their life when they didn't expect. And I remember I was in a boarding school for seven years before I entered the seminary. And you know, in boarding schools, we, are, we have several students in the same room and we had you know, double beds. I don't remember how you call that. Double beds. One below and one up. I was up. I was companion below. And we spent years together in the same, same classroom, you know, in the same room, you know, with older students. Who could have said that when he was 20 years old, I was in the seminary, one day he was just going to work, he was a nurse, 20 years old, got the car, it was passing a truck on the highway. Another car just went from the right side of the truck, cut you know, the way to the truck. The truck, the truck tried to avoid the other car and just crushed my friend on the border, you know, on the, on the side. He died immediately, 20 years old. Never thought this morning, you know, it was the last one. A few weeks ago, I had to give... A, an extra motion, the last sacrament to a young person, 35 years old. Went to a light surgery. Light surgery to take something out of his body, but it wasn't that big, it wasn't an issue. And during the surgery, he, we discovered, that we discovered the, 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 the doctors discovered that he was allergic to the anesthesia. And they called me and was having seizure. The heart stopped. Gone. He got all the sacraments, thank God. He never thought that today it's my day. Jesus is knocking my door. Maybe he was doing, having plans, family. I'm not saying that to scare you. It's not the purpose, but just to live in reality. Not like this man. This man, this fool rich, the rich fool, was living in complete illusion. Complete illusion. He was planning his life forever. I will live forever. No. No, we won't live forever. And that's not being pessimistic or trying to scare ourselves. It's being realistic. Today we are. Tomorrow, maybe not. It doesn't, doesn't matter. The only thing that matters, being prepared. 
So that was the first illusion of this full rich, thinking he will live forever. Second illusion, he believed that he will have health or goods during this lifetime. Another illusion, not only I will live forever, but I will have health, I will have whatever I need to take advantage of this wealth I have. Second illusion, you have no idea. The health we have today, tomorrow we can lose it. Remember a case, you know, I was in Argentina. They called me to give the sacraments to a, a young man, 25 years old. He was the nephew of one of our parishioners. What happened? He went to work, he was working in a factory, and he was having a break, you know, a snack with the, the co-workers in front of a big truck. You know, the truck they were using to move things. And he was just in front of the truck. The truck, he was there just, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, sustaining him, you know. What happened? While well, he was having fun with the companions, another employee had to move the truck. So he went, he started the engine, but what he didn't notice is that one gear, the first gear was on. So you know what happens when we have one gear in a car or in a truck, there's a big jump. And the motor, the, the, the engine just starts and causes the, the car to, to make a jump. And when this is a big truck and you are just in front of the truck, you can imagine the result. The poor guy was absolutely destroyed. He called me. He was in the hospital, of course. He was in surgery because the truck just crushed his head, crushed his lung. And uh, again, I don't want to scare you, but this is real. This is real cases, huh? And they called me to give the sacrament to this poor guy who was between, you know, death and life. And I could give him the sacraments very shortly. The poor man, you know, he, he didn't die. Miraculously, he didn't die. But his life was changed forever. I've changed forever. You know, this health, this... He had just gone forever. And how many times that happens? So, second illusion, you know, of this man thinking that he would have health and he could enjoy life the way he did until now, the same in the future. Illusion. And again, it's not to scare us, just to be realistic. This is real. We can lose what, what we have. So, the second illusion. And the third illusion of this man. He wasn't using the time he thought he would have to do good, to read him time, to read him time, but only wasting it. That was the, the last mistakes, maybe the worst one, the worst one. He thought he, he would have time, first mistake. He thought he would have health to take advantage of this, second mistake. But third one and the worst one, so I have time, so let's waste it. Worst mistake. If I think I have time, I have to use it properly to redeem time, to take advantage of time. And you know, in this sense, to understand how we can take advantage of time, we can compare, compare our actions, you know, to coins. Coins we are every day accumulating, you know, in the balance of eternity. And the coins, that is our works, can be of three different kinds. Coins of plastic, plastic coins, iron coins, or golden coins. Plastic coins. You know, plastic coins doesn't worth anything. You can use it for monopoly, and this is the only thing that, uh, that's worth. Nothing, absolutely nothing, worthless. And the plastic coins are our sins. The plastic coins, they only take space, useless. So each time, you know, we do a sin, we put a plastic coin in our treasure of eternity. That's worthless. And more than that, it's weight without worth, worth, being worth anything. Then you have the iron coins. This is something better, but, you know, doesn't worth anything. Something, but not a lot of things. Iron coins are our good works made in a state of sin. So they are not sins. They are not plastic coins. They are iron coins. 
It's good, but you won't be rich with that for eternity. Because the only thing that matters, the only thing our Lord we put on the balance the day of the judgment are the golden coins. The only one that really matter. And the golden coins are the works, the good works we do in a state of grace. These are the ones that matter. So this, this man, you know, this full rich, no golden coins, no iron coins. He was only wanting to do, have plastic coins. The greatest illusion in his life. So he would present himself in front of our Lord. Here is my treasure. And Jesus would look, everything is plastic. Worthless in your life. Doesn't matter. Third illusion. So my dear faithful, we understand that we have to redeem time. We must not follow this illusion of this man. And how can we do that? And you know, first, let's live every single day, each day, as if it were our last day. And you will tell me, Father, it's a, it's a bit sad, it's a bit uh, harsh to say that. It's being realistic. Because if we do that, we will avoid so many mistakes. And we all go do mistakes. I do mistakes, you do mistakes. Because we don't live our day as if it were was the last one. So let's think, what would be today, this Sunday, if it's the last one? I'm not prophesizing anything. Eh? Just saying, try to imagine. How do we live today as if it was the last one, really? How would we attend this Mass? Last Mass of our life. Then, the time with our family. How would we spend the time with our family? The conversation we would have. The attitude toward the neighbor. How do we spend, would we spend our day if it was the last one? And you, you, you will have an idea what should be every single day of our life. This is the way to not waste time and really make something useful of our lives. And let's not again fall in the same illusion. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I have time. Ah, this great illusion the devil repeats to the soul in a state of mortal sin. You have time. Don't worry. I don't listen to the priest always with scary language, say scary words. To not let you go there in the confessional. No. We don't have time. Let's be always ready. And let's take advantage of time. You know, again to be realistic, each second you have someone dying. Each second. So you know, since the beginning of this sermon, I know how many people presented themselves in front of Jesus. Let's think that one day it will be our second. When? I don't know. We don't know. But this is the only important second of our life. So, my dear faithful, let's really redeem time. Because we don't have time. We never know. Let's be prepared. Let's take advantage of this life. Let's live every single day as if it were, was the last one of our life. And in this case, we will really redeem time. We'll understand what we have to, to do, you know, to, to really take advantage of time. Look at the world. Look at the world, what they do for businesses. You have people, they don't sleep, they don't eat for some business. To get money, to get millions, to get billions. They don't sleep, it's their obsession. And they don't want to waste time. And they don't realize that the only thing they're doing is plastic coins. A lot of plastic coins. Lost time. So, my dear faithful, let's not fall in this illusion. Let's ask our mother to really help us at every single moment to take advantage of the time we have. And this way, if we try, try always, you know, to, to take advantage of the time we have, to not waste it. When the last second comes, when the time of our second comes, and we don't know when, 
maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe in 10 years, in 50 years, it doesn't matter. But when this second comes, we will be ready. And that will be a glorious second. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.